Amen. Give God a great big hand clap. Hallelujah. Say it again. I will not leave the same. In Jesus' name, I will have my miracle. I will touch the Lord. And he will respond to my faith. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now look at somebody and say, get your miracle. Say it like you mean it. Today's your day. It's a new day for you. It's a new day to live God's way. It's a new day to live healed. It's a new day to live delivered. It's a a new day to live victorious. It's a new day to start all over with Jesus. It's a new day to be bold for the Lord. It's a new day for new joy. It's a new day for new joy. That's a word for somebody. It's a new day for new joy. Joy unspeakable. Joy you've never known. Joy you've never walked in. Nor joy you've never believed in. You can have it today, saith the Lord. In Jesus' name. Now give it one more great big praise clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can be seated. I'd like to welcome, every, welcome everyone all over the internet. New Day Christian Center, an upper room, Holy Ghost, fire filled, God controlled Pentecostal church where you can be healed, you can be delivered, you can be set free, you can be saved, you can have a new day to live your life God's way, the way God planned it. And we're going to look at that in a few minutes. This is our monthly miracle meeting service. Amen. Amen. And we will see miracles. Jesus is here. God the Holy Ghost is here. And you have faith. I said you have faith. Yeah, you better amen that. And we have faith for you out there. We've been fasting. We've been praying. We've been seeking the Lord. We've even got prayer requests that have come in over the Internet. And we are here for you. This monthly miracle meeting, spread the word, get people to watch these services, come here if they can be here. We have wheel, wheel, wheelchair uh, accessible ramps. We have elevators. There's nobody that cannot get here if they want to get here, and Jesus will heal you. Can I hear an amen? amen. Jesus will set the oppressed mind free. Amen. Jesus will set the, 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 the heavy heart free. Jesus will set the afflicted body free. Amen. Look at somebody say, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen them. I've witnessed them. And I'm a performer of them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm just going to teach for a few minutes. The Spirit of God is, is moving. The power of the Holy Ghost is present. And we are going to see God move in lives today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. uh, For people out on the Internet, uh, if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to follow right along with us. Amen. There's no distance in prayer. There's no distance in the Spirit. There's no distance in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He can be right there, even if you watch this tomorrow or the next day or the next day. The Holy Spirit anointing on the spoken word and the omnipotent spirit can be right there as you open your Bible and follow along with me and release your faith to enter into the spirit realm. And he could touch you, heal you and set you free right there in your living room, right there in your kitchen, right there in your office place. No matter where you turn this on, Christ, the healer will meet you if you turn it on and enter in, enter in with your faith. Can I hear an amen? amen. So I want to speak to the people on the Internet. Uh, for just a moment and into this congregation. And I want to say something. We don't have just a congregation. We have a body. We have a body of believers. We have people that have fasted this week. Every every, uh, end of the month, they they dedicate special extra time for you who's sitting out there afflicted and suffering and tormented. And they deny their flesh in fasting. They deny their flesh in in their scheduling and set aside extra time to pray for the hurting and suffering all over the world. Can I hear an amen? Amen. How many of you here have done that this week? We do it every third week of the month just for people we may not lay eyes on until we get to glory. 
but God can heal you and deliver you because we have sought the Lord. We have touched God for you. Now all you got to do is let your faith go and touch him with us in Jesus' name. And I want to say something to you as we, as we, the, 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 yeah, for I am even touching bodies and I am touching minds and bodies now, saith the Lord. I am quickening people's understanding all over the world as they tune into this message and tune into this service and actually will enter in not only in desperation, but in expectation. I will quicken their minds to understand and have have a deep rooted faith spring up out of them that they never experienced before. But their faith will come alive in Jesus name. I have ordained it this day for many, many people, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. In James chapter 5, verse 16, it says this. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. That's what New Day Christian Center has dedicated itself to once a month is praying one for another, praying for people all over the world. Maybe we're not even, there's nobody sick here in, in this immediate congregation today. But there's sick, afflicted people all over the world, all over the body of Christ, all over America, even in our uh, Pentecostal evangelical churches that need a touch from Jesus. They need a visitation from the Lord. They need somebody to walk in faith for them because they're beat down and weak right now. Amen. How many of us here in New Day Christian Center have ever needed prayers because we're just beat down and weakened by the adversary? Amen. Family that will pray for you, fast for you, seek God for you, consecrate their lives to touch God for you. Amen? Look at somebody and say, I know for a fact you're here, you're standing because somebody else has prayed you up out of the hole. Hallelujah. Up out of the miry clay. Up, up out of the pit that the enemy planned for you never to escape from. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. But there's liberty in Christ Jesus. There's freedom in Christ Jesus. There's resurrection in the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of the Lamb. He can never keep you down. If your last breath can breathe faith to Him, He'll raise you back up out of the miry clay. Hallelujah. So I want you to understand the power of prayer. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. Now, just say, pray that you hope to be healed. Pray that maybe someday you'll be healed. But when we pray here today and we release our faith out into the Internet, all over the world, our prayer is be healed in Jesus' name. Not maybe, not sort of, not might be, but be healed. And our prayer, now watch what it says here, the effectual fervent, heartfelt, energetic, earnest, sincere prayer. That's what that means. Look it up in the Amplified. Of a righteous man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. I am righteous. I may not smell righteous all the time. I may not look righteous all the time. There might be people line up all over America tell me how unrighteous they think I am. But I have dove into the blood of Jesus Christ. I have accepted the Lamb of God as my Savior and my Lord. And I have been transformed supernaturally into absolute rightness with God through the blood of Jesus. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. So as we pray as righteous men and women, the effectual, heartfelt, fervent prayer. Now, folks, we're not going to fast if we're not fervent about this. We're not going to we're not set aside time for extra prayer if it's not in our heart and we feel and we want suffering people set free. Can I hear an amen? amen. So we're not up here just doing something to have something to do. We have consecrated this church and consecrated these monthly services for you out there. 
for you to have your life changed, for you to have the prison doors opened up to you, for you to come up out of the miry clay, for you to rise up out of the deathbed, for you to get out of the, the death sentence that doctors have passed on you, for you to get up out of the confusion and the torment and the affliction of the whispering voices that keep you up all night saying, you're going to die, you're not going to live, there's no hope for you. We have fasted for you. We th- you're in our hearts. You're fervently burning inside of us. We want you free in Jesus name and the prayers of righteous men and women avails much produces much gets great results is what it says in the Greek hallelujah so we're not up here praying that you might be healed we're declaring as the righteousness of God be healed in Jesus name so as we pray in this service during the service and at the end of this service I want you to start declaring this is my day this is I'm in the right place I'm at the right time this is my appointed place this is my appointed time it is now time for me to rise up and be healed in Jesus name hallelujah. can I hear a hallelujah? hallelujah glory to God and I want to walk with you through the history of mankind and I want you to show that this is, this is not something that God just dreamed up because, because of, uh, 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 he, he had a plan for people to suffer. God, look, look at somebody and say, God's plan was never for you to suffer. You didn't sound very convinced of that. God's plan was never for you to suffer. Now listen, if God wanted you to suffer, he would have started this whole thing in a, in a, in a weed patch. He would have started it with, with bubbling sulfur coming up out of the ground and, 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 and lava spitting fire, and, and mankind would have had to duck and run and hide all the time from the time he broke, breathed breath into him. That's not what he created him in. It says he created man and put him in an absolutely perfect, peaceful, generously supplied, gloriously wonderful garden. God's plan was for you to have a garden of life. An abundance of life. A perfect, beautiful, non-threatening environment of life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What changed that was not God. It was a lying, stealing, thieving, conniving, arrogant demon named Lucifer. A fallen angel came into form and possessed a snake to speak to Adam and Eve and seduce them and trick them and foul them up to where he could separate them from the perfect, wonderful garden life God created them for. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, when they're walking in that garden, there was absolutely no such thing as sickness and disease. There was no form of curse. There was no form of corruption. They would have lived eternally at perfect, listen, even this body was designed to live many, many, many thousands of years longer than we live. Why, well, why do we die so early? Why did your, your parents die of heart disease at 55? Why does cancer run in your family? Why, why does manic depression, your uncle has it, your auntie has it, your, your mama has it, you have it. Why? Because of that one day when they believed a lie. And they were separated from God's perfect design for their life. And with that liar came everything that he possesses, and they could never, no longer tap into what God supplied. Amen. And the only thing, it says in John 10:10 10, 10, that the, the thief, the devil, the serpent in the garden, comes only for one reason, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So he's a destroyer of your health. He's a thief of your prosperity. He's a killer of your joy. He's a separator of you and God's love. Can I hear a hallelujah? Hallelujah. And with that, the only thing he can give you is sickness and disease. The only thing he has to offer is the exact opposite. Poverty, lack, violence, early death, premature death, depression, discouragement, oppression. That is his gift to you without God in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, God, God still loved man, even though, look, look at somebody say, even though you failed him. Even though you have failed him. He still loves you. He's a God that with a never-ending love. He's forever in love with the backslider. So look at somebody and tell them, my miracle's not based on my performance. My miracle's based on my ability to believe God still loves me. Hallelujah. 
He's forever married to the backslider. I may fall eight times, but he keeps picking me up eight times. He keeps picking me up seven times 70. His love never ends. He's always reaching out to restore you back to the original plan of a good, fruitful, abundant, blessed, joy-filled life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So you only have two realms you can live in. You can either live according to God's loving supply and loving uh, uh, substance and loving embrace, or you can live in, in the embrace of the snake and be in, afflicted and tormented and diseased and yes. barren and unfruitful and, and just walking around. And You know, I know people, they never get out from under the cloud. As a matter of fact, they're so used to living in the cloud, they bring it with them. Hallelujah. You tell you, you tell you, there's some people sitting in churches. You say, I'm believing God for this. Well, I'll wait and see. Well, praise God with me because God's God promised he's going, well, I'll praise when I see it. They're just funky little rain clouds all over God's, God's people that are trying to walk in the goodness of God. They're trying to walk in the best of God. They've got a word of cursing. Look at somebody and tell them, don't put, don't be using your mouth to curse my future. <clears throat> don't you use your mouth to separate me from God's best. Even right now, there's a mouth moving in some people's brains on the Internet, whispering, that won't happen to you. That's good for the other guy, but God knows what you've done. God knows how you failed. Yeah, that he's talking about God still loves, but ain't nobody failed as much as you failed or as bad as you failed. And you got you to rise up and tell that, that whispering demon, don't use your mouth to separate me from God's love. Don't use your mouth to separate me from God's miracle. And you got to shut your ears to that voice and open your heart to the voice of the Holy Ghost saying, I still love you. I still want the best for you. It's not too late for you. If you'll release your faith and step out toward me, if you'll put your hands on me, I'll put my hands on you. I'll raise you up. And nobody can separate you from the love of God. Yet You may be down, but you're not out. It may be a short time, but it's a good enough time to get restored in everything I've ever promised you. There's still time to have my best. Hallelujah. Woo, did you hear that? That's a word for somebody. There's still time. Yes, Jesus is at the door. Yes, the curse is being poured out on the earth. Yes, the, the adversary's anger is being poured out because he knows the day is short. But there's still time to live in the divine, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's still time for God's best. God can make up for all the joy you've lost in your life in the last year of your life. Glory to God. I'd rather have it late than never. Amen. I would rather have his best late than never. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you right now, the effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man and woman today is going to turn your life around if you'll reach through the screen with your faith and make a point of contact and claim it with your mouth. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God spoke to the serpent. He said, because you've done this. Now listen. Because you've done this, you're going to crawl in the dirt the rest of your life. He's lying to you that he's some exalted place. He's a dirt eater. I don't like snakes. I don't like spiders, and I don't like lizards. I don't like nothing that hops, crawls, or slithers. It just reeks with the curse to me. Now, why you'd collect that nonsense and have an aquarium full of them, I don't know. Something needs to be delivered in your brain. Hallelujah. 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 Isn't it amazing that, that these women that stripped down to a loincloth in these dark, dim, murky, sin-filled clubs, and they'll put a snake on them and dance. That tells you what kind of spirit they got. They got a demon. That, that demon in them likes the serpent, their king that made everybody fall from God's best. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. Yeah, look at somebody say, you better not like snakes. Better not be collecting them. Some people marry them. Hallelujah. But God's opinion to the snake, he said, now you're going to crawl on your, on your belly the rest of your created life. And because you've done something, I'm releasing, a, I'm releasing a prophetic promise right now that this woman that you thought you were going to separate from me for forever, that her very seed is going to raise up resurrection and restoration. And, and you're going to bruise his heel, but he's going to bruise your head. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now, that was a pro prophecy of thousands of years later. Well, how long is it going to take? Don't worry about it. God's moving in the realm you can't see all the time. Mark 11, 23 and 24, we're always preaching about now faith. But the very next part of that is this. Now, once you've used your now faith, Sunday the 28th faith, at 1145 faith, right, right now, not right now, get, get serious, right now. Don't look at me like that, because I know somebody coming to your house ask like a fool. You're gonna, you wouldn't say, please leave. you say, you better get out right now. And that's how God talks to the devil. That's how he expects you to, right now, faith. Say it with me. Joy's way too sophisticated. Right, 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 right now, fool. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you need to get so frustrated, you get right now, faith. Hallelujah. You got to get so sick and tired of being sick and tired of his mess. You get him out of your house right now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he released a promise of the future. And in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, when you believe that future promise, you may not look healed right now, but once you claim the promise, it becomes a right now manifested, manifested work in your life. And you may not listen to me because most people lose their healing before they ever get out of the church house. As soon as they say amen and hit the door, the other voice that you haven't learned to tell, get out of your life right now, has talked you out of it by the next day. Hello. Now, right after Mark eleven twenty three and 24, it says, now, once you've released your faith, God says, now, I'm going to show you how faith works. Go to sleep. Faith is your servant. I've given you the gift of faith to set the kingdom at work, and you don't got to stay up all night looking at your body saying, is it working, is it working, is it working? Go to sleep, rise up, go to sleep, rise up. The kingdom's working, and it springs up and sprouts up with healing in its wings and deliverance in its branches while you're asleep and going about your business. Believe it, receive it, and walk ye in it. Hallelujah. You don't wake up the next day feeling for something. You don't walk up, wake up the next day looking for something. The kingdom has promised you it's working your healing to its completeness day and night, day and night, day and night, day and night, until one day you look in the mirror and say, my God, it's done. It's a done work. Well, it was a done work when you claimed it. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I had somebody pray for me, and I, I, I didn't feel no different. He didn't say, now get up and feel like it. He said, believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember Brother Norval Hayes talking about his daughter. She had something like 35 warts on her hands. Don't sound like much to you. Hold your hand out there, Tamina. Hold your hand out there, Bree. Hold your hand out there, Joy, Judy, Sherry. Look at your hands, pretty hands. How would you like to have 37 warts on each one of them? Wouldn't that be heartbreaking? Especially for a young girl. And she was tormented and afflicted because he had marred her body, the devil had. And he, Norval, was praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. How long did Norval pray? Three years. And the Holy Spirit showed up to him one day and said, how long are you going to put up with this? What do you mean? I've been fasting. I've been praying. He said, listen, listen. You can fast without expectancy. You can pray without expectancy. The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man. I mean right now. Amen. Did you hear me? You can go from praying to praying. I like what Pastor W.V. Grant taught me when I was on staff with him. He said, the, the key to manifestations with God is stop believing what you see and start, uh, and start seeing what you don't see. Amen. Uh, start seeing what you believe. Stop believing what you see. And start believing and seeing what you believe. Did you hear me? Now that comes with a rat now prayer. I'm done with this. I'm, not, I'm done fooling with you. I'm not, and he, said, he also taught me this. He said, most people pray till they're through and don't pray through. Most people pray till they're through instead of praying through. The praying through is, it's done right now. 
Did you hear me? Did you hear me? So you can pray without expectancy. And you can release, relate, re, think you're release, releasing faith without hope. Amen? Well, what's the difference? When, you get, when you've prayed through, you know it's settled in heaven and hell, and you get up and go about your business. And then faith's kingdom, the kingdom realm of faith, is turning and working and growing and manifesting and enlarging. And so, so God said, Norval, how long are you going to put up with this? He said, what do you mean, how long? I've been fasting and praying. Yeah, you, you can fast without hope. And you can pray without expectancy. Amen. God said, you're tolerating it. Well, Norval went in there and got that settled right now. Amen? And just a, just a short time after that, uh, uh, what's his... What's his daughter's name? Um, not Zonel. Zona? Something like that. She's cleaning out her closet. Now, she's just a kid. She's like in her high school years. Can't go to dances or nothing because she feels ugly. And that torments your soul. See, Satan's never happy just still in your health. He wants to torment your head. You can't be happy sick. Come on. Now, you can decide to walk in joy in affliction, but you can't be happy sick. Big difference. Big difference. Amen? And she pulled everything out of her closet, put it on the bed, and she's taking out one at a time, putting some stuff off to give to goodwill or charity, and hanging up the stuff she had decided to, 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 to keep. Many of you have heard him testify of this. And she, she put something up, turned around, picked something up to hang it up, and oh, my God, every single wart on her body had supernaturally disappeared. Amen. And they've never, ever come back. Amen. What happened? Once he prayed through and settled it right now, the kingdom was working. Amen. Even when you can't see it, when you can't feel it, when you can't sense it, God's performing his promise. Amen. Jesus was still coming when thousands of people stopped looking for him. Amen. Hallelujah. God set, kept sending prophetic Forward future promises. Psalms 107 20, he sent his word and healed them. Amen. Isaiah 53 4, by his stripes you are healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Numbers 21. That, what, oh, oh, let's open there. Open up to Numbers chapter 21. Now, I'm not going to teach too long, but this is good. This is a word of the Spirit of God spoke this to me in my office today. Hallelujah. Now listen, I'm talking to a generation that needs to hear this for the healing. I'm talking to a generation in the church that needs to hear this word for your healing. I'm talking to people that love God and can't tell where the curse is coming from. Hallelujah. We know it's coming from the devil, but you can also not recognize where to shoot your arrows of faith if you don't know the weapons he's using. Amen. Glory to God, that's good teaching. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Are you ready? Amen. Now look at, look at Numbers chapter 21. They're coming out of Egypt. They came out of Egypt. And listen, from bondage to full inheritance is a process of life. Just like the kingdom working while you sleep and go about your business. Amen. Sometimes God will do an instant miracle, a right now miracle. Amen. Most of the time, God starts a process. And he bases the process's continuation of you staying in faith and doing what you were instructed to do. Amen. Remember Naaman? Go dip what? No, no, no. Not no, no, what? What? Seven. Seven times. Not four, not five, not six. So it's based on us continuing to follow prophetic instructions, Amen. the promises. We start, we'll pray, but we don't pray through. Hallelujah. Those standing in prayer, when you pray, believe. But we don't pray long enough to get the belief settled. Hallelujah. So the promises of God are based on our obedience and our walking out day-to-day -day continuation of the prophetic instructions to inherit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why people, so many people, well, glory to God, I don't want to start jumping around. Are you ready? So he's, he's supernaturally set them. Free from Egypt, from slavery. Look at somebody say, if you're sick, you're a slave. If you're oppressed, 
you're a slave. If you're discouraged, you're a slave. If you're tormented, you're a slave. You heard me tell you about the testimony of being set free from daily, multiple panic attacks for 365 days. I'm telling you, it was hell. I was locked up. I was going to church and I was preaching, but I was in tor- I was in a cell of torment every single moment of every single day. Just because you're going to church don't mean you're free. Just because you told a Bible and claim you know it don't mean you're free. Anytime there's a form of the curse in your life, you're a slave. You're locked up in prison bars of hell. Now, you may be, may be a good-hearted person trying to teach yourself to smile through the bars, but you're still a prisoner. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's, still, that's still locking you up from God's best. I didn't say you're a sinner and you're ugly and God hates you, did I? I didn't say you're an inferior Christian, did I? I just said you're in bondage. Amen. Hallelujah. And you're a slave to that bondage. You know, there's people enslaved to bondage of COVID right now, and it's gone. Even the knuckleheads that try to pervert society with it aren't talking about it anymore. And they're still driving in their cars with their masks. And every single goofy thing they touch, what? alcohol, 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 get away from me. I've got the blood of Jesus. I'm talking about Christians. You can't touch it. Alcohol. That's bondage, folks. I remember the days I used to touch stuff without hosing myself down with alcohol and everything. I could open my car door without hosing myself with alcohol. Hello. Do you remember those days? There's people still living in bondage over something that's gone. It was always gone, but they didn't have faith to believe it. Hallelujah. All right, so God's brought him out of Egypt, supernaturally crossed him over the Red Sea, the representation of all walls that separate you from God's promises. God can part them. He can part them then. He can part them now. He parted them then. He parted them with Elijah, and he parted them with Jesus forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I said he parted all the rivers that separate you, the, the rivers of life and the things that life has dealt you. And the flows of the curse, you can walk right through them on dry ground through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, he's he's got them on that process of learning obedience, the continuation of going closer to their promised inheritance. Amen. Hallelujah. How many times we give somebody a prayer cloth saying, now go home, sleep with this. In two or three days, they'll throw it in a drawer. No, you've got to continue the process. Amen. Well, how long? Until you look back and you're on the other side of that river of hell that separated you from your health. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, so when, when you start in obedience, you have to finish in obedience. Finish in obedience. Yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. When, when the prophet told Naaman, now go dip in the muddy uh, r- rivers of Jordan, river of Jordan for seven times, it offended him. He didn't want to follow instructions for his own deliverance from the bondage of hell and the curse. How many Christians are the same way? They'd rather not obey and just claim that's past and you're a heretic for believing it. I, I'll tell you something, folks. I believe this Holy Bible from cover to cover. Not a single thing has changed. I believe every jot, tittle, every dot, every dash, every period, every comma in this Word of God. Amen. I believed it when I got born again, and I'm going to believe it when I'm caught up to glory. Praise oh, God. Amen. I'm not going to change anything just because the battle gets hot. I'm not going to change anything just because it gets hard to serve. I'm not going to change anything because it's unpopular to be a Christian now. I'm not going to change anything because most of the body of Christ is departing from the faith. I believe Jesus Christ is Savior. I believe Jesus Christ is Healer. I believe Jesus Christ is a baptizer with the Holy Ghost. I believe Jesus Christ is the soon coming King. And I believe that God's going to judge the righteous from the unrighteous, separate the precious from the vile, and we will inherit the kingdom of Almighty God, and we will be with Him forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I still believe this Bible. I'm going to continue in my obedience. I'm going to continue in my obedience. 
And I believe that when this Bible said 2,000 years ago, be ye holy for God is holy, that he still means walk a holy life, walk a straight life, walk a narrow life, be out from among them, for you are not of them, but you are in them. You have to walk with a holy God in a holy path, in a holy heart. Hallelujah. I don't believe anything's changed just because this old sick world's getting carnal and sin-soaked. I'm going to continue in my obedience. And I'll live a delivered, prosperous, joy-filled life. Hallelujah. Right in the middle of hell. Listen, your breakthrough's not in your surroundings. Your breakthrough's in who you're living with. (laughs) And I said living with, not visiting once a week. Psalms 91. Those that what? Dwell in the secret place of the Most High. That's habitate. Live. That's your dwelling place. You raise up from there and you lay your head down at night there. Amen. That's my address, the presence of God. Hallelujah. Not, I don't visit. He's not the Hilton. He's my habitation. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. We got too many motel Christians. No, Motel 666. (laughs) Can I hear an amen? Amen. Well, you know it's true. And they steal the towels when they leave. (laughs) That spirit's gotten on them, the thief. (laughs) Hallelujah. (laughs) So you got to say it with me. You got to continue your obedience to continue to inherit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's brought them out of Egypt. He's walking them through the desert. And guess what? Listen to this. Tell me, the Spirit of God spoke this to me in my office, came down into me like impartation, brought revelation, and I'm going to preach and he'll bring manifestation to a, a, a generation that needs to hear a word from God. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Verse 4. And they journeyed. How many people got, get saved and stopped journeying? Well, I used to walk with the Lord. That's not a testimony. That's a defeat. That's an accusation. And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Eden. The soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. Now, how many Christians are there right now in this final hour of life when we need to be stronger in the Lord, full of more faith, more expectancy, bringing Jesus Christ to a lost and dying, sick and sign world? How many of them, well, it's just too hard to serve God now. It's not popular, and they're picking on Christians, and they're, they're grumbling about the way of walking with God. It starts by first finding an easy-peasy church. Because Holy Ghost Pentecostal holiness churches like this that believe every jot and tittle of that word, by his stripes you are healed, that's too hard to live it. Amen. I've had them tell me that in churches. We had people in Canton leave the church. Well, what happened? You mad at pastor? No. You didn't like the church? No, I love the church. It's just too hard to live by faith. And they find a non-faith and just settle down in the curse. Amen. I've had it said to me dozens of times. Don't think they're here because you're not a good Christian. Don't think that they can't receive from here. It's just too hard to walk where we walk. They get discouraged because their flesh is so strong. Hallelujah. I'm I'm not saying that to be arrogant. This great falling away from the faith is because the journey gets too hard and they get discouraged. Not that God still can't deliver. Not that God still can't heal. Not that God still can't supply by faith. God hasn't changed. I'm the Lord God. I change it not. But they get discouraged. And right after that discouragement, now, folks, every one of you know dozens of people that are claimed to be Christians sitting at home because it's just too hard to serve God. There's too much of life going on. Well, it's getting going to get worse and go on more and more if you don't rise up, take a hold of your healer, your deliverer, your supplier, and get back on the path and continue to walk with him. He is the only answer. We just sang that. He's the only answer. He's the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes this way except with me and through me. Amen. Well, I, don't believe, I don't believe that faith stuff. I tried it. It didn't work. Well, yeah, you went two days and gave up on the journey. God didn't change. You did. 
You got discouraged. Hello? Some of your countenances are falling. I think this is the right word. Hallelujah. Well, what's this got to do with healing and delivering? I'm glad you asked, praise God. Hallelujah. Watch. And be the people, their soul of the people. The soul is what? Mind, will, and emotion. They're in the flesh now, not the spirit. I am God. I, you must worship me in spirit and in truth. You must worship me in your spirit, not your feel like, and in truth. What is truth? The word of God is truth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And you're going to have to clear up until the eastern sky splits, the trumpet sounds, and, and, and you leave this earthly realm and this, this mortal coil of the flesh, and you're caught up into glory with Him. Clear up until the trumpet sounds. you got to serve Him in spirit, not feel like, and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not popular opinion. Truth. Not what people say. Truth. Not what grandma said. Truth. Not what other churches say. Truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Your healing's in this truth. Your healing's in this truth. Your healing's in this truth. He sent the word and healed them. How they get afflicted? Because they were foolish people that started sinning. Because of their transgressions, they became oppressed. Now watch this. Are you ready? And the people, what? They got discouraged because of the way. The journey wore them out. Who's got a different translation? Tell me, does it say the same thing? Well, I used to serve God, but just stuff happened. I got, dis got overwhelmed. I got tired. It's just too much work. Right here, God's talking to him right now. Better pass this video around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, folks. Anything Satan can stack on you, if you put up with that, he'll stack some more on it. And you put up with that, he'll stack another set of bondage on you. He'll keep stacking up till you finally just sit down and quit and say it's too hard to serve God now. You got to get him out right now. You got to, when he knocks on your door, you'll say, you're at the wrong address. I'm not opening the door. Get off my property right now. Amen. Just because, you know, you wouldn't believe it nowadays because you can't even eat without somebody on their cell phone. Uh, I'll take a number three. Yeah, I'll take the check now. Everybody have a good time? Let's go. Come on. We're talking to a generation addicted to talking. Addicted to the things that they're addicted to being afflicted. Because in the multitudes of words, there's no lack of sin. You can't get them off their cell phones. Before that, it was a. By the time you did that, you're out of the mood. <laughs> Two. One. Four, nine, six, seven, seven, I mean, it took freaking ever just to dial a number. And even then, they were addicted. But we got to get buttons. Oh, much better. I could talk quicker. But I was raised this. Listen. Just because the phone rings don't mean you have to answer it. People are like Pavlov's dogs. The devil's got them trained. Ow, go see the doctor. No, you don't have to answer it when the devil knocks on your door. Come on. Wrong address. Get out right now. I'm not opening the door to you. Get your umbrella, little guy. It used to be television. It's flat screen internet now, but they used to have a commercial little wimpy guy with bifocals, raining and pouring. He says, uh, "This is flu season. Have you gotten your preventative shot yet?" And people just, "Oh, I forgot." Christians, knock, knock, knock. 
Receive the curse, receive the curse, receive the curse. Your, your, your prevention's not in the blood, it's in the needle. I think they did that again with COVID, didn't they? Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you can get real discouraged serving Jesus if you don't stay in the Spirit. Amen. It can really, it's meant to wear you down if you don't stay in the Spirit. It's meant to get you off course if you don't stay in the Spirit. It's meant to get you to give up in the middle of your, of, of, of your walking with the Lord just before you, uh, he'll do it clear up until you set foot in the threshold of your new home. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Now, here's the bad part. Here's what this spirit does. And the people spake against God. Well, I tried walking by faith. Folks, there are people putting out videos right now. They used to put out videos that went to this church denouncing God the healer. I tried it. It didn't work. Let me warn everybody in the world. Evangelist for hell. You know who I'm talking about. You know it's a God's truth. Didn't get the breakthrough like they wanted. When I, and I'll tell you the other side of that coin. They didn't follow instructions either. They claimed they did, but they didn't. Hallelujah. And then sit down and make videos and post them that God doesn't heal anymore. I'm an example of it. That's speaking against God. There's churches that speak against God because they don't believe the journey. They don't believe that if you start in faith and end in faith, you're going to get the hallelujah. It fell off. The hallelujah, it's gone. The hallelujah, the x-ray's clear. Hallelujah. Amen. Next thing about this, discouragement leads you to speak against God. Now you're in real trouble. Watch this. Well, I've been believing God for this. When, when is he? And you start mouthing against God. You better use your lips to embrace and kiss God, not put a curse on your own future. Hallelujah. The, speak, the people spoke against God, and here's the other part. It never fails. And, and Moses, his servant. People don't start cursing God till first they curse the pastor. <laughs> Well, I ain't cursing him. I just don't believe what he's preaching. Same thing. If the man or woman of God that you're sitting under is preaching this without compromise and without consideration of the world system, you better believe it. And you better believe him. You better stop listening to me when I start preaching stuff that's not in here and in context. Now, just because it's in here and in context and most people don't do it, don't blame me and don't start cursing me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For everybody that doesn't get healed, I've seen people healed. Well, what if you pray for them and they don't get healed? So what? How many altar calls have we given and nobody gets saved? We don't stop preaching salvation. We stay true to the path. And there's people that get saved and there's people that get healed. Glory to God. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? Now listen to that. God's marching them to get past the wilderness, and all they can focus on is the wilderness. They don't have a vision of where they're going. They don't have a vision of themselves healed. They don't have a vision. Listen to me, people out there. you got to start right now, according to the word, say, I see myself out of this wheelchair. I see myself walking. I see myself free of cancer. I see myself with perfect uh, blood pressure. I see myself with perfectly clear blood. No more diabetes floating around in my body. I see myself running again. I see myself jogging again. I see myself in that new house. I see myself driving that car up to the driveway. I see myself preaching to thousands of people. I see myself laying hands on the sick, casting out devil, raising the dead. I see myself do that. You got to keep your sight on the future promise. Cannot get your eyes on the here and now and how hard it is. Hasn't got a thing to do with you other than slow you down and stop you. Yes, it's coming on the world, but it will not touch me. 
I preach about the end times and I preach about repentance and I preach about getting holy again. I preach about stop being carnal to get them back on path, not that it's going to touch me. No matter what they do, it's not coming on me. I'm going to walk in prosperity. I'm going to walk in healing. I'm going to walk in the joy of the Lord. I'm going to walk picking up all the promises of God as I continue forward in obedience on the journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not counting how long is it going to take. I'm not counting how, how far away does it look. There's bless, ooh, glory to God. There's blessings along the way. There's inheritance along the way. There's increase along the way. There's healing along the way. Keep my eyes on the way, on the way, on the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, yes, thank you, Jesus. Oh, no, no, you, you believe that stuff, you'll die. There's people who say that. Well, I know some that believed in healing, and they died. Well, I'd, I'd rather die in faith than live a life full of doubt and unbelief with nothing to glorify God. If my, if my life is going to end early, dear God, let my last breath say, I believe in you, Lord. I believe you're my healer. Rather than spend another extra 20 years saying, I tried it, he lied. You can't trust that word no more. I'd rather die in faith than sustain a life in doubt and unbelief. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Glory to God. Now, good news is you don't, if you're doing it right, you don't die in faith. Amen. You think you're in faith, but you're not. Come on. You think you're praying, but you're not right now praying. You're not getting into the kingdom. You're, not, you're, you're, you're through praying, but you're not praying through. Well, how do you know the difference when you get up knowing that you know that you know you got it? And you don't have to debate about it every, every other flip-flap day. Amen. Hallelujah. On, That's where these name it and claim it people look so foolish to everybody who wants to get on the Internet and have a ministry to pick on them. Because they can't inherit, they can't receive, they can't perform. So let's pick on the ones that do. Let's pick on the ones that started sleeping on the floor and now they're flying jets. Let's pick on the ones that were raised up out off the deathbed and now they're preaching Christ the healer all over the world. Let's pick on them. Come on. Most people don't have a ministry if they didn't have a ministry of picking on somebody. Come on, bro. Hallelujah. I pick on sin. I don't pick on other ministers. I pick on ministers that don't preach the way. Because they're still in God's inheritance. You understand the difference now? Don't you lie to these people and tell them, kumbaya, it's okay without the Holy Ghost. You're a liar from hell. Your power is in the Holy Ghost. He's the one that raised Christ from the dead. That spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He will make alive your mortal body. That means no sickness and the curse of death working in it. Tell me you don't need the Holy Ghost, you liar. I'm just telling you the way it is. That's a lie from hell behind the pulpit. Those are the kind of people I'm hard on, not the sinner. I'm telling you, I love sinners. I, I used to be a real good one. I was a member of their fraternity. First Transgressors Incorporated. I was a professional sinner. I was a designer sinner. I meditated and studied how to sin better. You think I'm kidding you. I collected sin. I had designer lighters, designer pipes, designer tobacco. Clothes that would seduce. Yeah this, makes, yeah, this makes my shoulders look bigger. My waist look narrower. Practice to walk. Watch out, women. Here I come. You think I'm kidding? Isn't that, isn't that sick? But they don't think it's sick. They think you're sick. No, I got, I'm right. You're screwed up. Hallelujah. I love sinners. I don't like Christians that play with sin. I don't like Christians that excuse sin. You're supposed to be a new creature, delivered from that nonsense. A light that they can follow, not a compromise they can hang out with. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. There's a great deal of effectiveness in holiness. Amen. Holiness is your light. Holiness is the anthem. Holiness is the mountain. Holiness is the city set on that mountain. Holiness is the path. Holiness is our God. There's a, a, 
there's an enticing anointing on sanctification and holiness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your, your, your testimony is magnified, amplified, and projected from you in the style of holiness in your life. Amen. That's how they tell. He ain't like us. She ain't like us. Glory to God. Well, it's not on how you look, brother. Well, you go ahead and just write a book on your compromised theology. You just look all the way through that. All the heathens knew they ain't like us. God's with them. Now, you can do all that stuff on the outside without being the righteousness of God in Christ, thinking that that's going to make you right with God, and it doesn't. But once you're right with God, you may want to put on clothes, I think. You may want to put on godly clothes. You may want to put on feminine clothes. Uh, clothes of a, a woman that magnifies God's holiness in their life. Now you add that to your righteous heart and you're a preaching machine without opening your mouth. You're a written epistle of all men to read. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. He walked down the street preaching. Minding your own business, preaching. Yeah, amen. Amen. Oh, look at them. They look like those Christians. I've preached enough. If you look at me and label me Christian, I'm doing it right. Hallelujah. Oh, look at them. They're bowing their heads and really praying. They're not going, oh, Jesus, thank you for the pizza. But they're, God, you're so good to us. Thank you for a great church service. Thank you for healing those people. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for blessing this food and making it good for our body. Thank you for giving us the ability to believe a good tip for this waitress to be touched by God. In Jesus' name. Amen. They're Christians. And then the Christians are going to look at you and say, we ain't never prayed like that. What are you doing? Convicting them. I didn't say you're wide-eyed, frothing at the mouth, radical, fanatical. But I'll take that any day over a wet blanket. Amen. I could take a shovel and control wildfire. Much better you can light a wet blanket. <laughs> All you got to do with wildfire is just keep moving it your direction the way you want it to go. A wet blanket, you can't do nothing with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me zeal. I'll, I'll, I'll teach you how to control it. Compromise, just go find another church. Why? Because you ain't never going to get healed. You're never going to walk as a testimony of what God is and wants to do. Come on. The fervent prayers of a righteous man, the fervent prayers of a righteous woman, the heartfelt prayers of the afflicted soul is answered. Amen. Hallelujah. So now they're discouraged. Now they're talking against God. Now they're talking against God's servants. Now they're saying, what you promise is a lie. You really came out here to kill us. You turned a blessing, the blessed promises, into curses. Somebody can tote that Bible and think there's more curses in it than blessings. Think they live a life never healed, never prosperous, never having authority over demons. Never have an authority over its circumstances of life. That's a pretty discouraging relationship with God. Amen. Yeah, I'd get discouraged if, if I turned everything God said into a curse. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I know this helping somebody out on the Internet right now. For there is, look, look what they said here. Uh, and the people spake against God and Moses, Wherefore have you brought us up out of this, out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? That's not what God said at all. He said that you're going to go through the wilderness to inherit the promise. Amen. You may not see the promise right now. It might look and feel like a wilderness, but I'm on my way. Amen. And the promise is sure if I stay on the way in obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. So when we pray for you today, you're on the way. Some of you might get an instant miracle. If you don't get an instant miracle, if, a, if an arm don't grow out, or you don't jump out of the wheelchair immediately, or your eye doesn't pop open and see immediately, you're, you're been delivered by the prayer. 
by the blood of the Lamb. Now start on your way every day. Thank you, God, I'm healed. Thank you for healing me on the 28th. Thank you for healing me on Sunday. Thank you for healing me at 1225. I am walking in health. I'm walking into the fullness, the manifestation of the promise that was prayed for by the man and woman of God in faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Lord said, fiery serpents. Okay, listen. You're walking with God. You're walking instructed by God. And you turn his instructions into a curse. And the curse usher in destruction and death. You can't talk against God and keep death out of your house. You can't do it. And God sent fiery serpents among the people. And they bit the people. And much of the people of Israel died. Therefore, the people came to Moses. There's your key. Repent and come back. Not look for another doctrine. Repent and come back. Not, not look for another church. Repent and come back to the way. Repent and come back to the man and woman of God you once sat under. Repent and come back to the God you once walked with. It's not in going further and further and further and looking for another way. And the people came to Moses. And listen to their hearts now. It said, we have sinned. Listen to me, America. Listen to me, church. There's the key for your deliverance for many of you. You've gone your own way. You've gone in your own mind. You've gone in your own wisdom. You got tired of walking by faith. You got tired of believing for your miracle. And you went off some stray church, some stray way, some stray doctrine, or you're not serving God at all. It's time to repent and come back. Repent and come back. Repent and come back and confess before the God you once walked with and loved and served in faith and say, I have sinned. I need forgiveness. Amen. A lot of you are staying locked up in your sickness because you have not come to repentance. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Notice in James when we started out, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man or a woman availeth much started first confessing your faults one to another. I'm not preaching false doctrine, folks. And he's talking to Christian. Have any of you sinned? Confess your faults one to another. And the prayer of faith will cleanse you and heal you of all sin and sickness. Amen. That's why Pastor TC has been anointed and literally unctioned and literally compelled by the Holy Ghost to start several years ago, preaching holiness and repentance. Holiness and repentance. Come back to the way. Repent, and God will receive you. God will heal you. And you can still have time to walk into God's promised land for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's not a promised land limping. It's not a promised land afflicted. It's not a promised land when you're tormented. It's not a promised land when you're full of fear. It's only a promised land when you're healed, delivered, and set free on the way. Hallelujah. <laughs> Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord. Anytime somebody preaches this word and you know it's the word and you know it's in context and that voice motivates you to say, yeah, but you are speaking against God. Amen. There is no yeah, but with Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By his stripes, you were healed. First Peter 2.24. God said, I'm sending the healer. The prophet said, by his stripes, we are healed, present tense. And Peter, from the other side of the cross, said, by his stripes, we were healed. When were you healed? 2,000 years ago at the cross. When was it bought, paid for, and delivered to you? 2,000 years ago at the, at the cross. You look back and say, devil, get out of my life right now. I was healed 2,000 years ago. I claimed it on September, or not September, what month is it? May 28th at 1230, the man of God prayed a prayer of faith. I received it. I claimed it then. I am healed. And never let a curse come back out of your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Whew. The we have, we, have, uh, we have sinned against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, make thee a fiery serpent. Set it on a pole. Say, Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross. 
Now, those people will argue with me. You telling, you telling people Jesus was a snake? Now, listen, listen. He who knew no sin, had never sinned a second in his life, didn't just take my sin. Read it. He who knew no sin became sin. He became sin incarnate. He nailed Satan on that cross when he nailed his body on that cross. Amen. He didn't just take your sin. He became sin. So that when he was crucified, all sin was destroyed in the believer's life. Hallelujah. And he, the sinner, the sinful one, Lucifer himself, cannot come near you. And I didn't just become righteous. I became Jesus righteous. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That serpent, Jesus became evil incarnate. That's why God had to turn his head and couldn't look at, look at him anymore. Why? Because he can't look on sin. He wasn't just taking my sin. He became all sin so that he could deliver from all sin and he could heal from all the effects of the sin. Nothing held back. Nothing lacking. Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole and it shall come to pass. Listen to me, church. Listen to me, world. Listen to the word of God. That everyone, not sometimes, somehow, some way, some people, everyone that looks to him, everyone that looks, that is bitten, when he looketh upon him, it, he shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass, put it upon a pole. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Put it upon a pole, and it came to pass. That when they beheld the serpent of brass, they lived. Now healing is so easy for you if you'll just look to the promise. If you just look at the promise, read it and believe it. You don't have to have some supernatural manifestation of angels and glory clouds. If you'll just look to Jesus. Read it in the word and see it by your eye of faith. He hung on that cross for me. And now I'm healed. It's just that simple. It was made to be easy for the Son of God to set you free of all your Amen. afflictions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's too hard. No, you just got to look to Him. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen to me out there in the world. You that are watching Pastor TC and listening to these anointed men and women of God. We've prayed, we've fasted, we came here in the Spirit. The Spirit's been stirring the whole time. The Word has gone forth, the Word of promise. Your promised land's been preached to you. Your promised land of healing. Your promised land of deliverance from the doctor's decree. Your promised land of deliverance from that divorce decree. The promised land of deliverance from that eviction decree. The promised land of deliverance from that uh, 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 bankruptcy decree. The promised land of deliverance from that repossession decree. The promised land of deliverance from the curse of all your relatives' mouths that say that you'll never get it. You'll never change. You'll never be any different than you are right now. All you've got to do to enter that promised land is get your eyes off of them. Get your eyes off the problem. Get your eyes off your body. Get your eyes off your failures. Get your eyes off the past and look to the promise on the cross. Look to Jesus Christ. Look to him. And as we pray, you will be healed. By his stripes, you were healed. You take possession of it by faith, looking to him today as we pray together. Hallelujah. So you're sitting out there right now. I'm, I'm in the spirit. I see a woman. You're actually a minister. And you have a bone affliction. You have a, 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 some type of a degenerative bone disease in your body. 
and his, try, and his adversary is trying to set it in on your body. He's trying to set it in in your lower back and in your hips. You feel it growing like a cursed weed in your body, and you're standing by faith, and you're believing God, but the adversary's pounding against your mind, pounding against your faith, pounding against your, your, your confession. I'm here, and I'm sent to you. We, the body, is sent to you today. And to send the word and heal you. Not maybe, sort of, kind of. In Jesus' name, be healed. I curse the root of this bone disease. In Jesus' name, rise up, woman of God. Rise up, servant of God, you are healed. And the people of God amen. said amen. I'm looking into the spirit right now. There's a man. You're sitting on your couch. You're watching me right now. You once walked with God. And you're exactly what the Holy Spirit preached to you. You walked with God, you gave up. You walked with God, you gave up. You walked with God, you gave up. And now you've inherited the curse and not the promise. You're tormented with suicidal thoughts. You are tormented. You are tormented with voices that say you're no good, you'll never be any good. Why not just kill yourself? You'll never serve God, you'll never walk with God, and, you're, and it's better for your family if you just go away. Spirit of God is saying to you right now, the day for your deliver, deliverance has come. If you'll get your eyes, look up. Right now you're crying. Right now you're holding your face in your hands. You're weeping for the sorrow of your sins and the sorrow of your departing from your faith. And God said, I'm here to lift you up seven times 70. I'm here right now, even in your living room, to set you back on solid ground and enable you by grace to walk with me one more time if you'll repent right where you're at. I even know your name, but I'm not going to say it for sake of protection of you. Stretch out your hands to your computer screen. Place your hand on mine. And agree in faith with this body of Christ. I break the assignment of these demons that have literally engulfed your mind. I cast you foul spirits down. Loose the man in Jesus' name. I release the flood of the Holy Spirit from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. To heal, to restore. You've even gotten sicker since you gave up believing for healing. Along with that sickness has come suicidal demons. The power of their influence is broken. Now rise up, obey God, receive the blood, be healed in Jesus' name. The people of God said, Amen. Everybody lifting up their hands in this sanctuary as we go further into the spirit realm. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb. Listen, 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 listen. You're standing in the kitchen. You're literally standing over the sink right now. You're a woman. You've defiled yourself. 
You've defiled yourself with the wrong men and wrong relationships. And you are literally standing over the kitchen right now. You were washing dishes, and now you're washing them with your tears. And you're saying, God, is there any hope for me? I once knew you, and I once walked with you, and I feel so dirty. And I've compromised, and I've sold myself for that which profits nothing. And right now, you're feeling the loving, healing, hallelujah, embracing presence of the Holy Spirit from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I bind the spirit of guilt. I bind lying voices that say there's no hope for you. Loose this woman now. Daughter, be healed and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Rise up. Go forth. Come back home. Go back to the household of faith. God is not finished with you in Jesus' name. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With our hands lifted up and our mouths filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless Thee, O Lord. I will bless Thee, O Lord. I will bless Thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless Thee, O Lord. Billy, you've had a loved one die and leave your life. I've never met you in the natural, but I know you. I know your name. You love God, but your heart's broken. You love God, but you, you feel like you cannot go on without this loved one in your life. The Spirit of God would say to you, reach out to me right now. Take me by the hand. And I will fill your heart with love. And I will replace that loved one with my presence. For you'll see that loved one again. And in the meantime, I will embrace you. I will restore you. I will bring joy for what the adversary meant for sorrow. For he wanted you to die of a broken heart and die premature. But the Spirit of God says, I will not let him have you. Rise up. Be healed in your heart in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 We had a write-in prayer request. A person by the name of Merrick said their spirit, they're, they're tormented by a spirit of fear. They're, they have emotional, psychological problems. I, I know by the Spirit of God they're hearing voices. They're, 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 uh, they're worried about dying prematurely, a premature death. Merrick, the spirit of the living God, is going forth right where you're at right now. And the living God would say to these demons, whispering in your voice, Stop! In Jesus' name. We take authority over you, you foul spirits. Loose Merrick now. In Jesus' name. I speak hope. Rise up. In hope, rise up in faith. It's not over. Get out of the cell of fear. Spirit of fear, you are broken in the name of Jesus. Be healed, be healed in Jesus' name. Be, I baptize you now in the power and the resurrection of the Holy Ghost. I command the Holy Spirit to flood you, to drive out all spirits of fear, all spirits of fatigue, all spirits of confusion, all spirits of disorientation, all spirits are wondering if you're really here. All voices saying that you're not real. This isn't real. You're not even alive. You lying voices. Go in Jesus' name. The people of God said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I lift up Louise James right now in St. Louis, Missouri. Pastor James, stretch your hands out to this computer screen as you watch Pastor TC and your family here, your PEC family. I command healing in your eyes. I command your eyes to open in Jesus' name. See now in Jesus' name. From the top of your head, woman of God, to the soles of your feet, be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, there's a minister up in Oklahoma that I'm not going to name by name, but he's tormented with fatigue, a spirit of discouragement. Brother, right now, this church sets itself in agreement for you. We command these spirits of fatigue. Loose the man of God now. It's not too late and you're not too old. We release a miracle of increase into your life so you're not distracted with so much secular work. Receive a blessing in Jesus' name. Receive a financial blessing in Jesus' name. You're not too old. It's not too late, brother. Rise up with new fire in the name of Jesus, with new zeal in the name of Jesus, with new vision in Jesus' name. And run, brother, in the name of Jesus. The people of God said, Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Stephen Retz, pastor. Pastor Steve, Pastor Marissa. Right now, as you're watching this, the Spirit of God spoke to me in, in, the, in the office while I was meditating and preparing for this service. The Spirit of God, I received a text from you. You said you're praying, you're fasting for people to be healed in these, in these monthly miracle meetings. And the Spirit of God would say, as you released your faith for Pastor T.C. and New Day Christian Center and the hurting and afflicted of this world, I will reciprocate back into your ministry. I'll reciprocate back into your lives. There's a new anointing for deliverance upon you, man of God. There's new words of knowledge. The prophetic mantle is in Krioka, Baba, Sakatea. It's all over me, brother, like a blanket. Receive the mantle of prophet like never before. In Jesus' name, you will speak as an oracle of God. You will walk as a man of God. You will carry healing with you. You will not pray for healing. You will bring healing to afflicted people. In Jesus' name. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Ricky down in, down in uh, uh, Grunge, Texas. The Spirit of God would say to you, as you have refused to give up, as you have refused to uh, accept defeat, many, many fiery trials have come your way, man of God. Many, many darts have been shot at you in the dark. Word curses released like arrows to penetrate your soul to cause you to give up on the way. But you have not. Yes, it's been hard. Yes, it's been difficult. Yes, you felt the pain. But the Spirit of God would say, I am well pleased with you. And because you have not quit a new day with a new anointing, a new breakthrough. Yes, uh, that's your word. A day of breakthrough. I am the Lord God of the breakthrough for you, Pastor Ricky. I am breaking through on your behalf. And people are coming. People will come. People will come. And you're going to be forced to start another church. Very soon, saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, he lost his church, but he didn't give up. He went preaching to other churches. He started evangelizing. He wouldn't quit. And the Spirit of God said, because he wouldn't quit, that which Satan thought was stolen from you is going to be increased seven times greater very soon, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise for that, church. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody in this congregation, you got a word. You got a word for somebody you see out in the spirit. Come up here and give it before God. 
This is a body church. We're all, these, these people are anointed and appointed to God. They're mature servants. It's not a, a performance by one man. Go ahead, speak, look in that camera and speak to whoever is sitting in the spirit. There's a male and a female who is bound by porn. They're addicted. It's almost as if it, it, there's a gravitational pull. Um, it's like it, it's like they're. It, it's like you're. It's almost like the air that you're breathing. It's like you have to have it you, you. It sustains you. I see them too. Oh, shama mama. You watch porn together. Oh, shole momo You watch porn together, and Jesus. you're researching. You are. You have even gone from de- from sin to depravity because you're watching porn. It's not even suited for a human being to watch. Oh, Jesus. Go ahead, woman. The Lord wants to break that right now in Jesus' name. The Lord wants to break that chain of addiction right now in Jesus' name. You're also smoking marijuana. Shut up. I see you laying in bed, watching filth, naked together, and an ashtray between you smoking dope. You're a prisoner of many, many different spirits. Yes. Say it the Lord. We command those spirits to be broken off of them right now in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Live holy. Wow. Live holy before the Lord. If you all are not practicing uh, uh, the right way of walking, uh, the right way of doing things with the Lord, turn away from the sin right in now Jesus in name. Jesus' name. Let the Lord restore yes. Heal in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that that addiction is broken right now. And even now, Lord, there's your your presence is there. The Holy Ghost right now is coming upon them right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Get Pastor Darlene and the kids in here. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Who else? Anybody else got a spirit, a, a word from the Holy Ghost? A word of knowledge. So you see somebody in the spirit realm. Go ahead and obey. Just keep praying in the Holy Spirit. Praise you, Jesus. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here and where he is is holy this is holy ground we're standing on holy ground for the lord is here and everything is holy Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 I see somebody suffering from panic attacks. And I'm talking severe. It's like you're afraid to close your eyes because every time you go to sleep, you wake up and your heart's pounding, pounding in your chest like it's going to jump right up out of your throat. And it's irregular and you think it's going to stop and you're afraid of dying in your sleep. The Spirit of God rebuke that in Jesus' name. I bind those lying spirits in Jesus' name. Loose that person now in the name of Jesus. In the name of of Jesus. And this hasn't just started. You've been living in this hell for, for a long time, saith the Lord. Well, now you're free. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone hearing from the Holy Ghost, please obey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I see a gang member. You're black. You got tattoos on both your arms and your neck. You're wearing a white. No, you're not. You're wearing a red hat. 
you're wearing a red hat and you're smoking a joint right now while you're counting money and you have two guns on the table. And you were raised right. You were raised in a Pentecostal church, young man. You have said no to God and you have gone the way of the world and the way of hell. And you have recently, even as you were sitting at this table to count the money from your drug sales and your robberies, it has even come up in your heart, I'm destined for death if I keep this up. I'm going to die soon if I don't change. But i got so many people around me and I'm so deep and I'm so covered up in it, I don't know what to do. I don't even know how you turned this on, but you did. Oh, I know, I know, I just got it in the Spirit. Somebody is watching this, and they're going to send this video to you. And you're going to turn it on while you're sitting at the table, counting your dope money with, with your guns on the same table, and you say, why did they send me this foolish stuff? And right now the Spirit of God is piercing your heart. Hallelujah. Right now, the Spirit of God is piercing your heart. And even though you're wanting to laugh and mock, you know that you know that you know God's touching you, and this is your last chance. And you better walk away from it. You better take your money, throw away your guns, and that which Satan meant for evil, you take that money and you give it to a church. You walk into that church and you lay those bags of money at the feet of the minister and say, I repent. I give my money and I give myself back to the God that I was raised with. I repent and I come back home to the Lord that loved me and has kept me alive in the middle of all this sin. And God's got to work for you, young man. It's not too late. Accept Christ. Repent. Say, Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, cleanse me. Jesus, heal me of this drug addiction. Jesus, heal me of the spirit of fear that keeps me in this lifestyle. Jesus, I'm coming back. Send me to church next week I will be there and I will never come back to this pit again do it son do it and he'll change your whole life in Jesus name hallelujah 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 there's, there's a, a, a young man named Miguel and you're a car thief and the Spirit of God has seen every single time you smash windows and you take cars and you take them to chop shops and, and, and you get money for bringing them cars that they change the VIN numbers on and they take the engines out of and they switch the parts up to. And you've been going all over Dallas, all over DFW. You've been making good money stealing cars and car parts uh, and changing them in at these chop shops. But you know that you know that you know you're one theft away from getting caught and spending half the rest of your life in prison. You know the, the, the blinding lights are on you. You know even now you're under investigation. The, ga the gang units are watching you. The car theft units are watching you. You know one slip and you're going to go away for a long time. But the Spirit of God, yes, your mother is filled with the Holy Ghost. She prays in tongues. Your dad works hard and he's saved, but he's not fervent like your mama. Your mama has kept you from getting killed. Your mama has kept you from... He, she has knocked on my door day and night, saith the Lord, saying, God, bring Miguel back home. God, bring Miguel back home. God, don't let Miguel die and go to hell. God, don't let Miguel go to prison. She has besought me and besought me and besought me, and I am touching you now, Miguel. Repent and come back. I will redeem. I will give the authorities the ability to completely foul up their computers and lose every case they've been working on you, and you'll disappear before their eyes. And it'll be because you're hiding under my blood. And I will protect you under your repentance. But come now, come now, come now, saith the Lord, and I will heal and redeem your life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 There's a woman named Tricia. 
There's a woman named Tricia that you've had kids, but then there's something you've, you've, bossy, coda, bossa, ta, ta, ovarian cancer. And you have been wrestling with this affliction against your reproductive organs. But you you want more babies, and you're saying, "God, don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to uh, have my next baby stolen. I want to have a I want to oh there it is. You want to have a baby boy, and you said, if you'll give me one more child, and you give me a baby boy, I will dedicate him to you, like Samuel. The Spirit of God said, "Rise up, you're healed, woman, and you will bear." In due time, and his, and you will name him Samuel, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Now I want everybody that received a word, write in, uh, contact us, and let us hear these great and mighty testimonies of what God has done in your life. In Jesus' name, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. One last call, body. Is there anything else you're hearing in the spirit? Anybody seeing something in the spirit? Hearing something in the spirit? You want to speak it out? Come, come do it now, please. Anything, Pastor Darling? Do you have anything from the Holy Ghost? Come, come up here. I can see the Spirit moving on you. That's why I said, "Go, go get Pastor Darling." I knew he was going to start speaking to you. Come up here and speak to the internet. Anything you're hearing from the Holy Ghost? I pray that uh, I hear the the power of God that for breast cancer. Yes. That breast cancer that. Who had the breast cancer will call in the name of Jesus shall be saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for for we pray right now for the breast cancer. That every breast cancer that die every root the die at the roots. in the name of Jesus. Dry up from the roots. I speak healing right now for the breast cancer. Completely healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, name, amen. 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 Jeremiah 33, 3. So um, call unto me and I will answer that great, answer your your prayer. And the Christ, the thing, that great mighty name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Darlene. Hallelujah. 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 Anybody? Anybody hearing something from the Spirit of God? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, I'd like to remind everyone before we close that if you would like a prayer cloth, you can write us and request an Acts 19, 11, and 12 prayer cloth and we will make sure you get one. Just just write in and give us your address. You don't even have to send us a self-addressed envelope. Just write in, send us your address, and we'll pay for the envelope. We'll pay for the stamp, and we will send you absolutely free a prayer cloth that's been anointed with holy oil, prayed over, uh, over and over and over again by the righteous servants of God, and myself, I keep them in every Bible I've got. I keep them at home. We keep a dish, a tray full of them here. They're prayed over. They're anointed. And if you can't come, then this is our way of sending our point of contact to you. And you touch this prayer cloth. You lay it on the afflicted part of your body or on the afflicted part of your loved one. And it's like us laying hands on them in Jesus' name. And the, the word says that God wrought, worked, demonstrated, mighty signs and wonders, miracles, special miracles by Paul when they took aprons and handkerchiefs from his body and laid them upon the sick and afflicted and demon oppressed. And he'll do the same thing. I'm the Lord God, I changeth not. Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8, I, I, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He healed 2,000 years ago. He heals now. He heals where you're at. It's the same thing. Write us. We'll make sure you get one and be healed in Jesus' name. People, God said, amen. Amen. And remember, Jesus is Lord and God loves Garland. 
Amen. Hallelujah.